Hast Welcome everyone, whether you're here in person or visiting with us on Zoom. Our topic tonight is joy. Great for a sunny, cold, blustery winter evening. So as Rumi, the 13th century Islamic scholar, Sufi mystic and poet asks us, when you go into the garden, do you look at the thorns or the flowers? Spend more time with roses and jasmine. I know I tend to polarize states. I welcome the pleasant experience and want to avoid what seems undesirable. And at the same time, I suffer from what neuroscientists call the negativity bias. Seems during our human evolution, it was advantageous to be super attuned to dangers in our environment. It was the one who noticed the shadow of the saber-toothed tiger in the bushes, rather than their friend, captivated by the colors in the sky that survived the sunset. Likely, we can all relate to the excessive amounts of time we spend ruminating about the thorns instead of smelling the roses. Yet, our lives are full of opportunities for joy. It is said that we will all have our 10,000 sorrows and 10,000 joys in this lifetime. Just as is certain as it is that all of us will suffer, it is just as certain that there will be opportunity for joy. In fact, our practice encourages us to incline our hearts in this direction. Joy is the fourth of the seven factors of enlightenment, those conditions in the mind that are said to lead to liberation. In Pali, the ancient language of the Buddha, this is called piti translated into joy, rapture, delight, happiness, or rapt interest. Joseph Goldstein, well-known Western meditation teacher, in his comprehensive book, Mindfulness, he says that PT has the function of a refreshing and delighting the mind and body like a cool breeze on a hot day. Because it directly opposes ill will and is incompatible with it, when the mind is filled with piti, there is no room for anger or ill will to arise. In a tricycle article, Roshi Pat Enko O'Hara describes joy as an unmistakable overflowing of feelings of delight in the world and its mysteries. A surging feeling in the chest that, that wells up, a buoyant, upward moving feeling of delight, pleasure and appreciation. She suggests that our conditioning, our habits and culture seem to build up walls of resistance to what we naturally feel. And that it is not until we are willing to be directly intimate with our life as it arises, that joy emerges out of the simplest of life experiences. Joy wells up when we leave room in our consciousness for it to come. So let's reflect together for a couple of moments. 
So today or yesterday or sometime in the recent past, recall a moment of joy. Or if gratitude seems more accessible, a moment of gratitude. So once a recollection of joy is here, take time to savor the experience. As best you can, bring it vividly to mind, recalling it all with your senses. And as best you can, feel it in your body. Pay close attention to where joy lives in your body so it becomes more easily recognizable. Let this experience sink in. Mm, soaking in it, like soaking in a warm bath, or absorbing the warmth of the sun. Neuroscientists say to allow at least 20 seconds to install this experience in memory. In this way, we leave room in our consciousness to take in the goodness of this experience. Often it's the simplest of experiences, a song of a bird or a glimpse of the moon coming inside from outside on a cold day, sound of rain, or a fresh snowfall. And sometimes the wonder of joy emerges in the midst of suffering when we are forced to feel intensely. The flash of reverence for life comes unbidden when we are free to actually be present. When we let go of the mental proliferations, our stories and the grasping after what we want and pushing away what we don't want, we, are, we free ourselves to, to actually be with things as they are. It's in the development of our mindfulness practice, the willingness to be intimate with all of life is offering us and see clearly what is here rather than living too much in the virtual reality of our thinking minds that we make space for joy and happiness to emerge. 
as a factor of enlightenment, joy arises when there is a strong momentum of mindfulness, closeness with what is here right now, delighted by seeing clearly, totally engaged with what is, A wonderful story that illustrates this for me is the story of Badia, a great Sakyan chieftain who left a life of power and privilege to go forth into homelessness and follow the Buddha. One day, a group of his companions overheard Badia as he was meditating, exclaiming, Ah, what bliss. Ah, what bliss. These fellow monks assume that he is reminiscing about some sensual pleasure from his past and told this to the Buddha. So when the Buddha asked Badia what was up, this is how Badia responded according to what was recorded in the, written in the Udana, the inspired utterances of the Buddha. But he has said, formerly when I had been a householder exercising rulership, there was a fully appointed guard set within and without my private quarters, within and without the town, within and without the realm, but although being guarded and warded thus, I dwelt afraid, anxious, fearful, and alarmed. But now that I am dwelling alone, gone to the forest, gone to the root of a tree, gone to empty places, I am, not af I am unafraid, not anxious, not fearful and not alarmed. I am unconcerned, unruffled, dependent on others with a mind become as a wild creature's. This is the circumstance I was considering as I repeatedly uttered the phrase, ah, what bliss, ah, what bliss. And then of the, in the collection of poetry of the elder monks, there's another record of what Badia had to say. And this time it goes like this. Soft were the clothes worn by me then, riding on an elephant's neck, eating only the finest rice with delectable meat sauces. Today, fortunate and happy, pleased by any scraps in his bowl, Badia, the son of Godha, meditates without any grasping, with lofty encircling walls, firm battlements and sturdy gates, guarded by many sword in hand, I dwelt in the city frightened. Today, Fortunate, unfrightened, devoid of any fear or dread, Badia, the son of Godha, meditates while plunged in the woods, established in integrity, developing mindfulness and wisdom. I attained step by step the dissolution of all bounds. So how do we understand what Badia was saying? In his life as a powerful ruler, Badia had felt pressured, anxious, and alarmed. And now gone forth without the burdens of being a chieftain, Badia is undertaking practices of integrity, mindfulness, and wisdom that free him from this suffering. Instead of the stress of fulfilling the expectations of his role, 
Badia expresses gratitude for his new life, appreciating the bliss of simply being in the moment and experiencing the flow of moment to moment awareness. From the well of stillness in his new life, Badia is appreciating a fountain of joy. There's a lot to unpack in this story, but the idea of the conditions for joy emerging from stillness reminded me <clears throat> of a recent vignette from my own life. While on holiday with my partner in a sunny and warm location. My partner has serious ankle degeneration and was walking very slowly from place to place. I found at times I was frustrated and kept noticing I was walking a few paces ahead and slowed down only to do it again a couple of moments later. Well, after meditation practice one morning where I experienced significant stillness of both body and mind, I determined that I could bring this whole body awareness and calmness that I experienced in my practice into walking with him. And I did do that. And doing this so improved my mood and the joy I experienced as we slowly sauntered from place to place. Like other wholesome states of mind, loving kindness, compassion and equanimity, joy can be cultivated. Appreciative joy also known as altruistic joy, sympathetic joy, or resonant joy, is joy for the joy of others. Just like compassion requires our empathy for the suffering of others, appreciative joy requires our empathy for their happiness. Called mudita in the Pali, it is one of the Brahma Viharas, the sublime states of mind that we are encouraged to incline toward. In her book, Boundless Heart, Christina Feldman writes of the importance of appreciative joy. She says, it speaks of our capacity to celebrate, honor, and rejoice in the happiness and well being of another. This is a significant aspect of the fabric of joy, tempering our tendencies to envy others, to compare ourselves to others in ways that we feel ourselves to be deprived or inadequate, and come to know a selfless joy in the face of another's happiness. Yet for us to know the specific dimension of joy, it is essential for us to know the vastness of the landscape of joy. Our consumer-driven society imprisons us in a culture of lack and insufficiency. It is constantly suggested to us <clears throat> that we are not good enough, we are incomplete, and should judge and define ourselves by the accomplishments and possessions of others. This type of conditioning places us in competition with the happiness around us, as if happiness was a commodity in limited supply.
again from the pen of Rumi. Today, like every other day, we wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. According to my dear teacher, Jack Cornfield, the aim of spiritual life is to awaken a joyful freedom, a benevolent and compassionate heart in spite of everything. Joy is natural to an open heart. In it, we are not afraid of pleasure. And we do not mistakenly think that it is disloyal to the suffering of the world to honor the happiness we and others have been given. Joy is actually the quality that can repair and refresh our energy to respond to the pain and sorrow around us. Joy gladdens the heart. We can be joyful for people and other beings we love, for moments of goodness, for sunlight and trees, and for the earth that supports us. And as our joy grows, we finally discover a happiness without cause, like an innocent child who does not have to do anything to be happy. We can rejoice in life itself, in simply being alive. So let's practice <clears throat> cultivating joy together. In this meditation on joy, we'll work with cultivating joy in our own and in others' basic goodness and good fortune. So with eyes closed or gaze gently lowered, settle into a comfortable position for meditation and take a posture that best promotes a combination of ease and alertness for you today whether that be seated, <clears throat> lying down, or standing. <clears throat> and as you're settling in, allow your senses to open to the environment and to the sounds around you. Noticing sensations of warmth and coolness where air touches skin. Sensations of contact where your body touches the surfaces that are providing support. And the gentle rise of chest and belly as breath comes in and goes out. Taking in nature's life force on the inhalation.
And with each exhalation, letting go into flows of sensation in the body. Mm. Welcoming the inherent aliveness of your entire body as a field of sensation. And savoring any feelings of peace or well being you notice throughout the body. Letting mind rest on body. As the body rests on the earth, supporting it. as best you can, allowing body to be relaxed and open, breath natural, heart easy. Ready to attune to joy. So let's begin by attending first to our own blessings and then moving on to sympathetic joy, attending to the blessings of others. So when you feel ready, Begin reflecting on your own goodness. And recognizing the good qualities within you. your unique, fortunate circumstances. Your measure of happiness and joy. Sometimes this goodness can be difficult to recognize, obscured by conditions of life or inner judgments, the way you're feeling about yourself, or external judgments, the way others or our society does not value you. As best you can, open to the goodness that is here. Perhaps ask yourself, how would your friend or your dear pet describe your goodness?
recognize that you have a body that to the best of its ability allows you to see, hear, smell, feel, to take in the joy around you. And you have a mind that knows this is so. Further deepening your appreciation of your goodness by reciting these phrases softly and in the most tender and caring way available in this moment. May I be joyful. May my happiness increase. May I not be separated from great happiness. May my good fortune continue. You can continue offering or adapting the phrases that resonate. Doing so with a, a timing and a spaciousness that works for you. I have a rhythm that flows from the music of your heart. And if the phrases don't work for you, simply allowing the radiance of joy to shine forth. May I be joyful. May my happiness increase. May I not be separated from great happiness. May my good fortune continue. Noticing how joy feels in the body.
opening to the quality of sensations, noticing how the energy of joy feels. Absorbing the experience like a sponge absorbs water. And if joy doesn't come up, that's okay, no judgment. Not trying to, needing to make anything happen or figure it out. As best you can, just resting in the felt sense of the experience. And if you find you get lost or disconnected in thought, you can always begin again. Reground in your sensory experience. And then reflect on all the good and beautiful qualities within you or the fortunate circumstances in your life. Offering phrases in your own way or staying with the felt experience of joy in the heart and in the body. May I be joyful. May my happiness increase. May I not be separated from great happiness. May my good fortune continue. Taking a pause to immerse in the felt sense of joy. Favoring this experience. You know, just as we are grateful for our blessings, so we can be grateful for the blessings of others. We can deeply know cultivating joy for the joy of others exponentially increases opportunities to gladden our hearts. So when you're ready, extend the practice of joy by bringing to mind someone you care about, some being that it is easy to rejoice for. Someone who's living with their measure of good, fortunate circumstances.
get a visual image or felt sense of that person. And feel the natural joy you have for their well being, their happiness, and success. Offering in your own way your grateful, heartfelt wishes. Perhaps using the phrases offered, adjusting them in a way that resonates, or simply allowing the radiance of joy to extend from your heart. May you be joyful. May your happiness increase. May you not be separated from great happiness. May your good fortune continue. Sensing into the sympathetic joy and caring in each phrase as best you can feel it in your body. Perhaps intensifying the volume with each phrase. May you be happy. May your joy increase. May you not be separated from great happiness. May your good fortune continue. And when you feel some degree of appreciative joy for the happiness of this dear one, naturally feel your joyful heart expanding, opening to offer wishes for joy to others you know. In your own time, bringing to mind other loved ones friends, neighbors, colleagues, your community. And as you expand your offering of joy, you may notice resistances and difficulties arise, including envy or jealousy, or comparing yourself with the other. This is a natural part of the practice. And as best you can, continue repeating the intentions of joy, including joy for the mind that can know what obstacle is present. Offering joy in your own way, your grateful, heartfelt wishes. May you be joyful. May your happiness increase. May you not be separated from great happiness. May your good fortune continue.
gradually opening the meditation as you feel ready. Eventually including feeling joy and celebration for the good fortune of neutral people, difficult people, and eventually even enemies until you extend appreciative joy to all beings everywhere, young and old, near and far. And taking a moment to soak in the experience of sympathetic joy, joy for the joy of others, feeling it as fully as you can in heart, body, and mind. dwelling in joy and delighting in this feeling of well-being. And in a moment, I'll ring the bowl to mark the end of our practice. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes or lift and widen your gaze. Feeling into your body and your heart space and inviting your body to move and stretch in whatever way feels right. And as we prepare to end the taped portion of our session and uh, enter into some community dialogue, just take these last moments to imagine yourself going about your days, welcoming in joy 
along with whatever else you're experiencing. Making it your intention to welcome in joy, your own and the joy of others, wherever you are, whomever you're with, and whatever you're doing. And like Bedia, you might find yourself saying, ah, what bliss. Much joy and gratitude for your practice.